Well, we welcome you again to today's reflection on the gospel. Here we are Christmas Eve and are getting ready to celebrate the great gift of the nativity, but technically this morning, we're still in the season of Advent, in this wonderful season of opening our heart, welcoming the Lord and getting ready for his birth. And so today's gospel comes to us from the gospel according to St. Luke. And it's the beautiful um, Benedictus, a word means blessed. It's the canticle of praise that uh, Zechariah proclaims when finally his mouth is able to speak and after he rejoices to say that his name is John and talking about his son, John the Baptist, and now he proclaims this beautiful proclamation of the goodness of our God. And so we're reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here we've had a whole season of Advent coming right to its very, very ending today. And hopefully you're getting a chance to uh, listen to this particular meditation. I know there's a lot of Christmas preparation today going on. And at first I was thinking, oh, maybe people wouldn't want to take the time to listen to my little uh, word that I would have to offer you this morning on what otherwise is such a busy, busy, busy day. But because of the pandemic and because of all of the restrictions perhaps on gatherings during the Christmas season, maybe today is not such a busy day for you. And if that's the case and you have the opportunity or you're taking the opportunity now to listen, my prayer is that God will bless you as you just open your heart to the very beautiful promised blessings now proclaimed at this very last day of Advent. Here, Zechariah, disappointed all through much of his life, wanting a child, not having a child. And finally, when he is, finds the news that his wife in her old age will conceive, and he doubts God, of course, he's struck mute. A time of silence, a time of social distancing, a time of removal from the fray and the busyness of life itself. And it seems that Zechariah used his time well. Zechariah used this time of silence as kind of a, perhaps, a mini retreat. Think of that, nine months of not speaking. <laughs> nine months of reflecting upon what God is doing. I mean, nine minutes would be like a marathon for most of us, right? <laughs> Imagine nine months of silence to reflect. And so what is the fruit of this reflection. What is the fruit of these nine months of retreat, these nine months of contemplation? What is the fruit that Zechariah has? Well, we receive this in the beautiful canticle 
that we just heard. There's so much that speaks about God fulfilling his promise. After the darkness, there is the rainbow. Uh, we saw all of that back in the early spring. Little children put that uh, little drawing of rainbows on the front doors of their houses where they lived while they were learning remotely and home from school. We saw many, many houses uh, with rainbows saying, after the clouds, after the storm, after the darkness comes the rainbow. Okay. Do you still believe that? So this has been a long period of time. It's been nine months since we had the pandemic. Now think about that. Nine months. What has been going on in your nine months of retreat? In your nine months of contemplation? Well, maybe we were struggling too much to get back to normal to really use the time well. Well, let Zechariah help you through this as we reflect with him on the fulfillment of God's promise in the midst of the darkness. And the one line that I would just like to offer to you for your own meditation today is the final lines of this particular canticle that we heard. And it goes like that. Through the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Ah. So, here we are in this moment still of darkness, perhaps, even though there's light at the end of the tunnel with the hope of two vaccines that have now been approved by the FDA. But nonetheless, the dawn of God, the dawn of his love is the light at the end of the tunnel. Through the tender compassion of our God, this dawn will break upon us. That's the promise. Darkness will end. And as you see the dawning, if you're up that early, if you see the sunrise, before the sun actually rises, the sky begins to turn color as if it were welcoming the sun. And that's what I'm hoping you're doing today, that you're opening your heart like that dawn sky to welcome the sun to welcome the Son of God. In the tender compassion of our God, those words are so beautiful. God, his compassion is full of tenderness for you. Tenderness, not judgment, not scolding, not in any way in, uh, like being mean to us because of the difficult challenges we're facing right now. But there's a tender compassion, even in these nine months, where he's asking our heart to expand even beyond all of the evidence to see that the dawn from on high is going to break upon us, to shine on us, and to guide us into the way of peace. May you today welcome the Son, the Son of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Have a blessed Christmas Eve, and of course, a blessed Christmas Day.